Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. It's time for Truso. Thank you so much for that. I apologize for the wait. Um, sometimes it takes me a bit to find the movie and to watch and stuff. I know people say 2B, but with my Aunt Sally internet, 2B doesn't always work the best. But uh, eventually I will. So for anyone who wants to send in a request for a review or a topic, reaction, re-review, commentary, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Um, also in the info box is my second YouTube channel in case anything happens, as well as my Odyssey channel, which a lot of these videos are backed up on. But thank you once again, Trousseau. And the film you wanted me to talk about was Mystery Road from 2013, which I never heard of this film. It's an Australian film that's a kind of modern Western meaning that it does showcase the outback in a western feel but it's a modern time and it's a like the title suggests it's a mystery where this guy named Aaron Peterson he's an aborigine who also is a police officer and he's come back in the town and people aren't being mean to him but they're they're not sure about him either So one thing leads to another, and this teenage girl is found dead, disturbed by the roadside, and he's got to investigate as to what's going on. Now other people in the film, the coroner is actually played by Bruce Spence. I recognize him. He's the gyrocopter pilot in The Road Warrior. I think he also came back in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and he's been a lot of projects, mainly Australian ones. But is that the guy from the Road Warrior find the, the little helicopter? Oh, it is. You know, Bruce Spence. So it's nice to see him. I mean, he's not in the film a whole lot. He's in a couple scenes, but still. I, mean, I know this is 2013, so it's 10 years old. But still, it's nice to see him in a newer film. Hugo Weaving, who's Agent Smith in the Matrix trilogy, among other stuff. He plays another cop, but there's some kind of... I still don't know the whole deal of what was up with his character. Does even by the end there's still a certain sense of mystery as to what he was involved or how much he was involved and I don't know, I, I thought that character they could have done a lot more with. Either in terms of explained a bit more of a backstory or a little bit more development or he kinda of just there to be a mysterious character who ends up kind of helping our lead at the end and even then this the way his characters left it seems a bit unsatisfying to me uh, the lead guy Aaron Peterson I thought he did a good job very much focused uh, there might not be a lot of emotional range but I thought it fit well with the proceedings it fit well with the story that I was telling and it's a good looking movie it's very low-key movie very nice cinematography you get these aerial shots where the outback looks beautiful, but then the actual town looks pretty mundane. And you get a lot of these aerial shots. In particular, there's a lot of shots in what I call the, the magic hour. Where the sun's getting ready to set, but it hasn't quite set. And you have that backdrop. And it's a beautiful... I love when they do that in movies, that magic hour type of... Which is always tough because there's only a limited amount of time you have before the sun fully sets. Or some places fully rises, like however you want to take in that. In this case, when the sun's setting. I always thought that looks really cool and vibrant for a movie. And pretty much the film is our cop talking to locals and trying to figure out what happened to this teenage girl. At one point, it seemed like texts were sent to his daughter. Uh, he is... His daughter's with his ex-wife. And his ex-wife seems like a big piece of work, so to speak. And the movie, it's a very, very, very slow burn. Now, there are movies that have done that and mystery films that have done that that have been fairly decent or good. Wind River, for example, with Jeremy Renner. Which, I, hey, I hope Jeremy Renner... Uh, gets better after its accident. But Wind River is a really good film. Uh, I did not mind as crazy as some of it is the, the Crimson Rivers with John Renault. 
know, there's plenty of movies where a mystery... You know, what was that one film I saw? I think Robert Forster was in it for a little bit, and the lead guy, he was a guy I had not seen. It's going to be in the back of my head. It's like, I reviewed it, I thought it was pretty good. It's a actor that, I think he's the guy that played the store owner in From Dust Till Dawn, and he started in the film where he's a cop going into... You know what? Screw it. I got a phone here and it's going to bother me if I don't find out what that is. I just looked at Robert Forster filmography. It's one of the last films that he did. He's in it for a little bit as the father of this person that died. But I mean, what I'm getting to the point is there's been many mystery films that's not the fastest pace that I've enjoyed. This one... I'm pretty on the fence about because it felt like there was just too long for it to get going. Too long for it to really step it up a few notches. I thought it went a bit too slow for my liking. To the point it got rather dull. And on this flip side, I'm not minding the lead guy's performance. I like the outback setting. The movie I'm thinking of... It's near his, the end of his filmography. It's... Small Town Crime. Yeah, Small Town Crime with John Hawks. All crawling ass cop who discovers a woman left for dead on the side of a road and finds himself compelled to locate the killer. Small Town Crime, I did like that movie. John Hawks, Anthony Anderson, Clifton Collins Jr., Robert Forster... That's the one I was thinking of. I did review that. Like, that I, I liked. So, there's just... I've seen this kind of stuff done. And I've seen it done, you know, better. So, I'm sitting there going... I'm ready for this movie that kicked it up a few notches. And it just felt like it just got... It was taking too much time with not a lot happening. Like the first 50 minutes, the first 50 minutes of the film is just the ensuing incident of finding the girl, a little bit talking to the locals, talking about what kind of knife it is, maybe a hunting knife, finds the dead girl's phone, sees his ex-wife and his daughter, watching trucks. Sees one truck in during magic hour, maybe a droid lab, maybe something there. But again, for this 50 minutes, it just, it felt like there was little story there to make it a compelling watch. And it wasn't that involving of a mystery because it felt at a point we almost forgot about this teen girl until the very end where oh yeah by the way that that was involved with the teen girl as well and there's not a lot of moments for the lead character to get these emotional sequences to himself whether it be it might be cliche but there's no big backstory about what happened to him back in the day or some kind of trauma or a lot of dealings with you know trying to get back with his wife or there's a point where he calls his wife out, like, do you know who you are? Because she's the one that seems with all the damn problems and drinking. So you don't really get much of a character journey for the lead character. Whether it be an emotional journey or an epiphany that he comes up with. Because a lot of times these mysteries, it's also not just the murder mystery, but also some journey about the man's soul, the man's mind, the man's mindset. Or his ideals, or his morals, or he thinks the system's right, but he realizes how corrupt it is. He thinks he's this, but he realizes he's this. He thinks he's prime cut high moral fiber, but he realizes there's a bit of darkness to him. There's really no personal journey with the lead guy that I saw. So, it, it I like the actor. It's just that the character, there's not much to it. 
and then again the situation I'm just as it slowly goes along I looked at the running time just thinking of what you could cut out for example there's a bit where you toss to a guy who made a call months ago about this wild dog so the guy the top goes sees him and says I heard months ago you called about a dog Tell him about he had a bone in his mouth and that bone might have been human but the guy doesn't remember he doesn't remember the details and all the information you get was that there's more missing people which as a cop you would think he already know there's a lot of missing people in the area I mean you would think as a police officer I'm not he hasn't been there for the longest of time but you think even in a short amount of time you realize oh yeah there's a lot of missing people in this area and that's like all the info he gets and I'm like you could get that in another scene that's much quicker and faster and this whole entire scene of him seeing this guy who just doesn't remember anything anyway could have been completely edited out could have been completely edited out and all it would affect was a bit of a better pacing And slowly goes into this motel and a bit of mystery of the slain officer and talks to the widow and oh yeah, he was uh, the day before he died or when he died, he had a call from another officer and there's thoughts from the lead, our lead that it might be Hugo Weaving and then finds out that his daughter's missing and it's just there's not a lot of excitement there's not a lot of intrigue I mean I have a DVD of True Detective season one which is a mystery that that I hate to say it True Detective is what eight, eight episodes nine to, I can't remember and that felt shorter than this movie at times because I just delving into the, the the stories of these cops as well as the mystery. So at least that keeps a bit of investment here. And I don't think this is a bad film. I don't. I don't think it's a bad film. I think it's shot fairly well. I think it does create a bit of atmosphere in the environment, the outback. Uh, I, I have no issues with the acting of the film. Hugo Weaving... He's not really used to much effect other than being suspicious. There's not a whole lot of action. Except the, the final final bit, there's a bit of a shootout. But it felt like it just took forever to get there. And really wasn't worth the wait. To spoil alert... The Lee Cop's daughter's missing. I get the idea that, you know, we need to talk to you if you want to see your daughter again. Goes to see Hudo Weaving. Hudo Weaving seems like he might help a bit. But he's also being very standoffish. Our Lee Cop goes to one scene where someone used to be, finds drugs in the TV, gets it. There's going to be a drop off. The bad guys. There's one in a Jason Voorhees hockey mask. And there's a shootout. But even the shootout felt. I felt a bit disen disengaged. Maybe because it did these attributes. Where there's no music during it. At times the shooting. It'll cut to very very far away. That the shooting's happening. Or there'll be a point where two people. Are shooting each other with rifles. But they don't, they don't feel. Scared. Or. Oh my god, fuck, you know, it just, pew, pew, pew. I'm like, like Hugo Weaving shooting at this other guy, I'm like, hide behind a rock, like, try to put some cover, not just, oh, I hope you don't get me, hope you don't shoot me now, good, you miss, I hope you don't shoot me now, I'm like, move behind, get some cover. The bad guy, I will say, did better did cover than Hugo Weaving. I'll say that. So it's not like it's not there. 
Um, I don't mind the sound effects of the the gunplay. Uh, it's not a gory type of violent movie. There's a bit where someone gets a bit of a headshot from a rifle. And he, there's a cool shot where our lead and another... Th it cuts back and forth and we see it through their scopes. So we see our lead through the bad guy scope and then we see the bad guy through the lead guy's scope. That was a cool shot. It goes back and forth as they have this kind of back and forth. I didn't mind that. And super spoilers, everybody dies except our lead, finds Hugo Weaving dead, finds that some of the people involved are some people in his department. Also, he looks in the back seat and finds something belonging to the, the girl. It's like, I almost fucking forgot that was part of the damn story. So, okay, well, that's what happened. The girl was in the back seat clawing and boom, they got rid of her. As something to do with, they do stuff to truckers, prostitute themselves. But I feel like I wanted to, uh, there was going to be a lot more into just how deep the corruption goes in this town. I felt like it just kind of stemmed the surface and I still don't get a big, for how long and slow it, the movie is, I still don't get a big depth as to the corruption. It's just when I see films like Cold in July with, uh, what's his name, from Dexter and Don Johnson's in it. I look at Cold in July, I look at Wind River, Crimson Rivers, and other movies. I, there's just other films I thought which much more that pulled me into the story compared to this. Like the lead comes back and has a staring contest with his wife and kid and I'm like, what am I supposed to get from that? The wife has been such an unlikable character to be flat out a bitch. The daughter, you don't really get much of love of the daughter for her father. Because the last time we saw her was like, felt like an hour ago. Where the dad's like, hey you can live with me. And she's like, why? And then goes off. So what am I supposed to get out of this? I guess because at one point the wife said, so, you know, you became a cop to change things. How is that working out? I mean, if I want more of that, watch Copland with Sylvester Stallone, which I love. I mean, I just didn't feel the impact like it seems like it should have. The mystery felt kind of hazy. I didn't feel the screws tightening like I should as it goes on and you delve deeper. I felt that in Cold in July and these other movies. I just didn't feel that with this. So I do not think it's an awful, terrible film. It got a lot of praise. I don't really see that as well. I do like Aaron Peterson. I thought he carried himself effectively um, with his uh, his presence. 